In this video, we're going to talk about bid prices and how airlines use them to control the number of seats to be sold at each fare class. In the following videos, we're going to talk about the models that are used to calculate bid prices. But for now, I just want to spend some time on the definition of bid prices and how they differ, how this type of control mechanism differs from the other type of control we've already covered, which are protection levels. So for example, in our last video, we talked about virtual nesting and we used EMSR. Well, we didn't actually do this, but we talked about how you use EMSR to calculate protection levels for these virtual buckets. In the videos on EMSR, we used EMSR to calculate protection levels for fair classes. We then turned those protection levels into booking limits and those booking limits were given to the reservation system to sell the inventory. So the reservation system had a discrete number of seats to be sold at each fare level and that number was decremented as bookings came in. Bid price control takes a different approach but you'll see the concept is very much the same. So let's take a look at this sample network we've been using. And let's look at the JFK to Miami leg and see how these different types of controls would work. So if we were calculating protection levels for just this leg, so ignoring the O and D um, impacts to the network, just leg level control, we would calculate some protection levels, turn them into booking limits, and let's say we'll just pretend that the capacity the capacity of the aircraft flying this leg is 100, we would have something like, I don't know, let's say we wanted to sell 75, oops, sorry, it's always 100 for the highest fare class. The booking limit will sell all seats at the highest fare class, will sell uh, 75 to the lower fare class, which means we're protecting uh, uh, 25 for just the Y class, and we don't want to sell anything to the $150 uh, at the $150 fare. So we already know how to do that. Now let's say we were using bid price control. Instead of having protection levels, we would have one bid price for the leg. So we'll write it here. And let's just say the bid price turned out to be $175. The bid price is a threshold. It's the minimum acceptable fare. So let's say bid price equals the minimum acceptable fare for the next seat in inventory acceptable uh, fare so to take the next seat out of capacity the airline needs at least 175 dollars so as the requests come in if the request is for a fare that is less than $175, that request is denied. If the request is for a fare that is above the bid price, that, accept is, uh, that, that request is accepted. So this bid price sets the bar so that all fare classes with fares lower than the bid price are unavailable. All fare classes that are uh, with fares above the bid price are open and available. So if an airline can accurately calculate this bid price, it can maximize revenue by simply comparing requests as they come in to this value. So let's talk a little bit more about what a bid price represents. We'll get into the mathematical definition in the following videos, but for now, let's just talk about the intuition. So you can think about it like this. The airline has a limited number of resources to sell. So in this case, their resources, their capacity, they have 100 seats to sell from JFK to Miami. If they sell one of those seats, there's some opportunity cost associated with that sale. So if they sell one of these seats, their capacity, this should actually be remaining capacity, so their remaining capacity, the remaining number of resources to sell would go to 99. So there's some opportunity cost associated with no longer having that seat to sell. And the opportunity cost is equal to what they think they could have gotten for that seat if they didn't sell it to whatever re request they accepted. So the bid price then becomes that expected value. What does the airline think they could get for that 100th seat? In this case, it turned out to be $175. 
And then the control decision is obvious. If they think they can get $175 for the 100th seat, then they shouldn't sell it to anybody who's willing to pay less than 175 And if someone comes along who's willing to pay more than 175 for example, the B-Class customer at 225 then they should sell it. Now, as the capacity continues to decrease, the remaining ca capacity continues to decrease, the bid price changes. So the bid price changes by the number of seats remaining. So it's not one bid price for all of these seats. It's a bid price for each marginal seat. This all goes back to Littlewood's rule. Littlewood's rule tells us that we should accept a request if the fare that we're getting with certainty from the customer standing in front of us is greater than the fare we expect to get if we save that seat for a higher fare customer that's going to arrive at a later time. Now, of course, that higher fare customer has some probability of arriving associated with it so there's some uh, expected value that is adjusted by that probability it's just another way of getting to the bid price so all of these models rely on that intuition that you make a comparison between what's being offered uh, with certainty to what could be obtained by saving that seat for a higher fare customer with some likelihood that that customer will or won't materialize. Uh, if you need a refresher on that, go back and look at the uh, Littlewoods Rule video where it's uh, explained in detail. So we've just illustrated the bid price concept using uh, leg level control. And in fact, if you used bid prices or protection levels and you were only doing leg level revenue management, there's really no, really no benefit uh, from bid prices. Depending on how you calculated them, you'll, you'll come up with the same revenue. The real benefit of bid price control is when you're doing O&D level uh, revenue management or uh, network revenue management. So now let's take that concept and extend that to the rest of our little network here. So I'm just going to make up some bid prices to illustrate this. So let's say the bid price from LAX to JFK, given the remaining capacity on this leg, we don't really need to say what it is, but let's say the bid price is $200. And then from Boston to JFK, the bid price is equal to zero. And remember, bid prices exist at the leg level. There's one bid price for each leg in the network. Now we can evaluate O and D level decisions. And I'm, I'm intentionally going to leave out all the math here. We'll do that in other videos for those of you who like the Greek symbols. But I'm just going to explain the intuition here. The way O and D control works with bid prices is it's the same concept as the leg. At the leg level, we compared the fare with the bid price. Now, if we want to evaluate a request from LAX to Miami through JFK, well, that request will take two units of the of uh, resource out of the network so we add the two bid prices together so the opportunity cost to the airline the opportunity cost to the network from selling this itinerary from LAX to Miami is the opportunity cost for giving up this seat and the opportunity cost for giving up this seat so we add those together and the total opportunity cost or the total bid price impact is $375. Now we can compare the, the fares with that summed bid price and the fare that is above the bid price will be available and the fares that are below that bid price will not be available. So, so these would not be available and this one would. So the, as the request comes in, the reservation system would compare the fair value being offered to the sum of the bid prices and then uh, make the appropriate decision. Now, from Boston JFK, I created a bid price equal to zero. And that's an interesting case that comes up quite often. Let's say that the capacity on the Boston to JFK leg was also 100 seats. If the total demand for that leg is not for at least the number of seats that it has available, then the opportunity cost of selling one of those seats is zero, right? So let's say I had 100 seats. 
total demand for all of the fares on that flight was only for 50 of those seats. So I expect 50 of the seats to go out empty. Well, if I take one of those seats out of inventory by selling one, I couldn't have sold that to anyone else anyway because I had excess capacity. So the opportunity cost of giving up a seat when I don't have enough demand to satisfy the capacity is zero. So in this case, we would use the same math. We would sum the bid prices, but the bid price from Boston to JFK is zero. So the total bid price from Boston to Miami would be 175. And then we could see that we would accept all of these. So it's uh, uh, equal or greater than the bid price. The uh, request is accepted. So now I think you can start to see the true benefit, the true value of using bid price control in, in an O&D system is that there's very little data to store to manage the inventory. All you need is one bid price on each leg and then the, the availability is calculated dynamically as opposed to protection levels which are calculated uh, prior to sale and then loaded into the reservation system. Bid prices are loaded into the reservation system and then for each availability request the reservation system does a very quick calculation and comes up with the, uh, the uh, O&D level availability uh, dynamically in real time. And that's what really enables true O&D control. Without bid price, there's, there's really no practical control mechanism that could uh, manage inventory at such a low level. Now, there are some challenges that come with bid price control. One has to do with uh, distribution. So, you know, most airlines work with third parties to sell their inventory. They, they sell it on their own, but they also distribute their inventory to third parties. Bid price control tends to work well within an airline's reservation system and not so well when others are trying to sell this airline's inventory uh, at this level. And we'll get into that. It's a fairly uh, arcane area, but it needs to be considered uh, when an airline is deciding whether to use bid price control. The other, the other time this becomes really relevant is in alliances. So airlines form alliances so that they have joint marketing and co-chairs and such. And they need to be able to effectively sell their inventory uh, within the alliance in order to uh, take full advantage of bid price control. There are also a number of modeling and mathematical challenges that we'll get into, and they're really quite interesting. One of them is the bid prices on these legs are not static. They must change quite often. So as, as I said, each time a seat is sold, as the remaining cap capacity decreases on each of these legs, the bid prices need to change. And how you change those bid prices throughout the day is really a non-trivial exercise. In theory, you would want to re-optimize the network and recalculate bid prices after every sale. Well, that's impractical, so you need some other way of approximating the change in the bid price in between times when you can re-optimize the network, and we'll get into that as well. So in the next video, we'll start talking about the network optimization models and the different ways of calculating these bid prices.